In this video, I will be teaching a method of factoring that I invented for myself and have been teaching my students over the past 20 years. I call it the rainbow method of factoring. It starts off with some scaffolds for support and then eventually when you get fast and good at it, you can factor in your head. So this is the basic way it works. First, you have a trinomial and you want to observe that the trinomial is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And then you want to observe that the coefficients are a equals 3, b equals negative 10, and c equals 8. And then you're going to ask a particular question, and there are two possible questions you can ask, and that is based off this sign right here. If this is a plus sign, it's going to be one kind of question, and if this sign right here is a minus sign, then it's going to be another type of question. Here are the two options. What two factors of AC, that is A times C, either add up to, and that's in the case of a plus sign, or differ by, that's in the case of a minus sign, the absolute value of B. So in this particular problem, we have what two factors of 3 times 8, what two factors of 24, add up to the absolute value of negative 10. So what two factors of 24 add up to 10? And the answer to that question is going to be 4 and 6, because 4 times 6 is 24. 4 plus 6 is 10. So this kind of question you can start off asking slowly, but you can see that you'll get faster and faster at asking this sort of question. Likewise, if you came down here, you would say, what two factors of 5 times 42? So that would be what two factors of 210 differ by 29. But let's go back to question number 27. What I want to do is I want to draw two parentheses underneath the problem. Just like this, this is the factorization of the trinomial. And we're going to work through the FOIL process backwards. So normally the FOIL process is first, outer, inner, last. And we're going to try to recreate those products. First has to multiply to 3 times uh, 3x squared. Outer and inner have to add up to negative 10x. And then last has to add a, uh, multiply to 8. So what we want to do is take our answer to our question, 4 and 6, and we want to put them in the rainbow. So we're going to add the coefficients, and then we're also going to add the variable. So we have 4x and 6x. And we need 4x and 6x then to add up to a negative 10x. We'll get that at the end. What we're going to do then is break up the last and the first into the parentheses. So the last is going to end up breaking up into the two last positions, and the first will break up into the two first positions. 8 can factor into 8 and 1, or 4 and 2. We're going to discard the possibility of 8 times 1 because 8 does not divide into 4 or 6. However, 8 also factors into 4 and 2, 4 does divide into 4, and 2 divides into 6. So by breaking up this last into 4 times 2, we now have the numbers in place to fill in the rest using the rainbow. So 4 times what is 4x? 4 times x is 4x. 2 times what? is 6x. 2 times 3x is 6x. So we have created the inner product, 4x, and the outer product, 6x. And we can check that the first product, 3x times x, does indeed multiply to 3x squared. The last, 4 times 2, does indeed multiply to 8. So this is the reverse process of FOIL. And lastly, we add the signs. We want 4x and 6x to add up to a positive, sorry, not a positive, a negative. We want a negative 10x. 
and we know we want it to be a negative 10x because we see right here negative 10x. So to make a negative 10x, we want to have a negative in front of the 4 and a negative in front of the 6. That means our inner product is actually negative 4x and the outer product is negative 6x. So in this method, I don't worry about the signs that go into the factor until the very last step. Now let's repeat this whole process again with number 28, but we'll go through it a little faster. Hopefully the second time around, though, will make more sense. Okay, so first we want to make the observation that we have a 5, a 29, and a negative 42. In my method, I ignore signs until the very end. So ignoring all the plus and minus signs, ignore everything that's a plus or a minus, except to determine this part of the question, what two factors of a, c differ by b? And again, I'm choosing differ by because the sign right here is a negative. So when this sign right here is negative, we use differ by. When this sign right here is positive, we use add up to. In this particular question, then we can reframe as what two factors of 5 times 42 differ by 29. So that would be what two factors of 210 differ by 29. That's a harder question to answer in your head. So you might want to go ahead and uh, do a factor tree. You can do a factor tree on 210. You break it into 21 and 10. And you can see that 21 and 10 are both factors of 210, but they differ by 11, not by 29. So let's break this up a little bit more. We have a 3, a 7, a 5, a 2, and these are the, uh, this is the prime factorization of 210. And if you group together particular pairs or combinations of factors, you can figure out a factor pair that is going to add up to or differ by your B value. In this case, we need to have 35 and 6 because 35 times 6 is equal to 210, but also 35 minus 6 is 29. So this fulfills the conditions that we need. So now I'm going to write my parentheses underneath my problem. I'm going to draw the arcs of my rainbow, and then I'm going to add 35 and 6 into my rainbow. It doesn't matter which order you put them. And then I'm going to add the variable z. And now my outer product needs to end up multiplying to 6z, and the inner product needs to multiply to 35z. 42 has a good number of factors. So if you have a composite number and you're trying to break up a composite number, you can do it through some uh, process of elimination or guess and check, but it is faster if you have a prime number to work with. Now you could figure it out using the composite number by going through all the factors of 42. You have 42 and 1, 21 and 2, 7 and 6, etc. And then you test each of them to see if they divide into the factor pair. I'm going to go ahead and go this route instead and say that 5 only breaks into 5 and 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 5 with the inner or outer product depending on which of these numbers it 5 divides into. Now 5 does not divide into 6, so we do not want 5 to go with the outer product. We want 5 to go with the inner product. But 5, remember, has to be part of the first product, which means that I must put the 5 in the first position, not the last position, because this 5 needs to multiply up here to the 5z squared. So this is going to be a 5z here and a 1z here. Now, 5z times what is 35z? 7. z times what is 6z? 6. And now I can check that 6 times 7 does indeed multiply to 42, so I'm on the right track. And the last thing I need to do is add the signs. I want 35z and 6z to add up to a positive 29z. 
And so I'm going to add a positive sign in front of the 35 and a negative sign in front of the 6. That makes my outer product negative 6z and my inner product positive 35z. So again, as you work through this procedure, it starts out slowly, but once you get the hang of it and you do this again and again and again, you can get faster and faster at this method of factoring to the point where you don't even need these arcs anymore and you can factor completely in your head, which is why I choose this method and it helps me to factor very quickly in my head. So I hope it works for you. And again, try repetition. Repetition is the way we get this into our heads and to help us to learn things well.